Well, we've got a lot of talk to talk about also in the news department this morning because as tensions ratchet up in North Korea between the United States and North Korea and our allies, and we see some of these parades, these marches in North Korea. Take a look at some of this. I mean, of course, this is a show of force. This is a show. But this is everyone who lives within 30 miles, you will report to the square and look happy. Right. Yeah. Because because dear leader is requiring you <laughs> to get right. down here. Otherwise, we will hunt you out of your apartment complex, get you down here to show your support for dear leader. That is exactly so right yeah that that is the picture of dictatorship right? well meanwhile he's been you know threatening he's been threatening a u.s unaffiliated ally or, or uh, a territory, territory which is uh, which is guam u.s citizens in guam so would a missile US troops in guam yeah Absolutely. i mean would u.s would a, a, a missile attack hit that island um president had called governor calvo there to reassure him and we have some video of governor calvo answering the phone he's you know, he's the governor of Guam. It's mm -hmm. warm. He's hanging out in a T-shirt, and this is the. <laughs> it was good. To, it was good to hear from the president. Take a listen. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to speak to you, and, and I just wanted to pay my respect. And we are with you a thousand percent. You are safe. We are with you a thousand percent. And I wanted to call you and say hello. How are you, Mr. President? As the governor of Guam, representing the people of Guam, and as an American citizen. I have never felt more safe or so confident uh, with you at the helm. So with all the criticism going on over there from a guy that's being targeted, we need a president like you. So I'm just so thankful and uh, I'm glad you're you're holding the helm, sir. I mean, Guam is the named target of Kim Jong Un. The ring of fire around Guam is what he has threatened. Yet he says he's never felt more safe. And this is this is juxtaposed that with the critics of this president who say it's targeted. We need a president like you. You are under threat. You want someone you know is strong. There's ways to attack strong advisors, as you pointed out last hour, mm -hmm. uh, that know what they're talking about, and is finally going to hold a firm line because they are in the crosshairs in Guam. Like my, I mean, we have been since World War II. My grandfather served on the island of Guam. I mean, it is it is uh, it's we've got six thousand troops. They've got some missile defense systems, about almost 200,000 U.S. citizens. You've got two U.S. bases there. And guess what? They're 12,000 kilometers from Washington, D.C. So all these reporters can freak out all they want. They're not under threat. Guam is, and their and governor that, says, thank goodness we have yeah, President Trump. That was really uh, something to see the governor where he is under that direct threat, just looking relaxing. Look. I've never felt more supported by well, president before. You know, it's it's interesting. There's been so much criticism of the president, uh, but he doubles down on that. He says, you know, I'm going to continue to talk tough. If you look at the polls, any poll that's been asked to the American people, do you think we are tough enough on North Korea? Every single one. The majority of American people say we have not been tough enough when it comes to North yeah, Korea. Slow, mar slow marched our way to a nuclear bomb. Well, and, and he's not, you know, he's not ratcheting it up to nuclear war. He said to he said to the governor of Guam and your tourism, by the way, I can say that your tourism is going to go up like tenfold with the expenditure of no money so i congratulate you he told the governor he's meaning like we're here to protect promotion. you nothing bad is going to happen we're here to protect you yeah. we're not going into nuclear war and yeah. so the president did double down responding to his critics saying uh, you know this is why we talk tough take a listen he utters one threat in the form of, a, of an overt threat which by the way he has been uttering for years and his family has been uttering for years or if he does anything with respect to Guam or any place else that's an American territory or an American ally, he will truly regret it. And he will regret it fast. Mr. President, you've said you want to send a strong message to North Korea. What do you say to your critics who say that your rhetoric is actually raising the tension? Well, you know, my critics are only saying that because it's me. If somebody else uttered the exact same words that I uttered, they'd say, what a great statement, what a wonderful statement. They're only doing it, but I will tell you, we have tens of millions of people in this country that are so happy with what I'm saying, because they're saying, finally, we have a president that's sticking up for our nation, and frankly, sticking up for our friends and our allies. To that point, not that polls matter at a moment like this, but his approval rating, the president's uh, per Rasmussen, went up from 39 to 45 just in the last week. I mean, well, there, is a, there is a sense that we're getting a serious response, uh, whereas the Obama administration slow walked this for him. Imagine the response if he weren't tough on North Korea, if he were kind of sitting back, not really giving us a sense of, of, of what we were going to do. People would say he has no plan. They have no idea what's going on with North, Korea, with North Korea behind closed doors. This is just total chaos. So to his point, there are a lot of people that no matter what he says, he cannot 
cannot win, including many members um, of, of the media, Hollywood. but Hollywood. Democrats. But Hollywood's always so quick to jump on board, right? And they're always so right, yeah. Actor Josh, Josh Whedon, and I had to ask um, Clayton who that was, but apparently he's a, he's a director. Yeah. When Trump threatens North Korea, he's threatening North Koreans with genocide. Twitter, delete his account. It's literally the least you can do. So his argument is... You know, because he's threatening uh, military action, potentially he's threatening violence. Well, and his count should be. Chelsea delayed. Handler's always outspoken on, on moments oh. like this. She says to all the generals surrounding our idiot in chief, the longer you wait to remove him, the longer your name will appear negatively in history. And wait, then your favorite claim. Is it a coup? Is that what she's, she's implying? She's the military should. Coup, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then Rosie O'Donnell. Um, yeah, we're, I think you're all big fans of Rosie O'Donnell. She uh, posted, you know, I, I, first of all, can we end people putting the little cat faces on their videos on, on Instagram? Because Not original. Here is Rosie O'Donnell with a cat face, or is it, I don't know what it is, telling uh, North Korea to ignore our president. Hi, Mr. Kim Jong-un. Sorry if I didn't pronounce that right. Anyway, sir, um, our president Donald is a moron. Don't listen to him. We don't. Whose side are you on? <laughs> Mr. Sir? Are we taking her serious? I mean, well, no, 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 I mean, you, with Rosie O'Donnell, we expect that from her, right? She has said so many ridiculous things over the years. But, but you can't help but think about just where has the respect gone in this country, right? As you said, whose side are we on? Are we fighting for the, the United States or are we fighting for North Korea? And can, it's not even, we're just not even begging for respect for the president. It's like they, these folks hate him. Rush Limbaugh hit the nail on the head in how they view this president. Take a listen. It's mind-boggling just on the surface of it. Coverage of the news all week. Nice to be nice to Kim Jong. We must not provoke Kim Jong. -un. Kim Jong Un could be reasoned with. We must just have Trump, dangerously unfit, dangerously insane, dangerously out of balance, out of kilter. We must do what we can to stop Trump. It is obscene. The poison of hatred flowing through their veins. More and more people, average ordinary American, low information people are starting to pick up on this now and starting to realize it. But the behavior is uh, of Trump's opponents is what's odd and whack and delusional and deranged and uh, dangerously. It's just dangerous. I mean, portraying the North Korean dictator as the stable part of this equation and that Trump represents the threat. It's just, it's, it's the result, I think, of so much poison. They've really poisoned themselves with hatred and they've done so purposefully and happily. This hate is just pouring through every crevice, every vein, every artery to the point it now can't be covered up or hidden. Right, his point that yeah, that somehow Kim Jong Un is the stable part of this equation, the guy that kills his own brother with, with an anti-aircraft gun. Yeah. Threatens the yeah. majority of the world with nuclear weapons. I mean, I was thinking about it this morning in our lifetime we have never experienced something quite like this, right? No. A threat, we just don't know how this is going to play out. I think a lot of people are feeling nervous. A lot of people have loved ones, by the way, over in that part of the world and are wanting so badly for this all to just calm down a bit. We don't know where this is going, but I will say that it is reassuring, as I said earlier, to know that the people in the White House, many of them have so much experience at this mm -hmm. level. And there may be some Democrats who may be throwing their support. I know earlier, Pete, you said, I I'm never going to be able to find a unicorn, a Trump Democrat. A, a, Democrat, a Democrat that supports, supports President Trump substantively. Well, I found one. You did? Yeah. See, I'm going to put up a little, <laughs> I, I think it's, I'm going to put up this silhouette of this individual and see if you can figure out who this is. All right. And I'm going to read this quote from this person. I think it's only fair to point out he inherited this crisis. The previous three presidents were not able to find an adequate solution. He cannot be blamed. He has a Secretary of Defense and National Security Advisor, both of whom are immensely respected. I hope he will listen to them, and I hope their cooler heads will prevail. It's still a criticism in there, by the way. I hope their cooler heads implying that President Trump is a hothead. And okay, can you guess who it is? <laughs> hmm. Uh, yeah, no way. Al Gore. The last guy I would have guessed. Former vice president. Wow, you know, really? someone who's been near the Oval Office and had to make be a part of making right. decisions like this would appreciate the fact that this. And frankly, it was the Clinton-Gore administration that signed the first deal with North Korea that allowed them the trajectory to get a nuclear bomb 20 years ago. Here we are. 
It's a. There you go. That is found, really found me. A little unicorn. A, a, a minor. And a, he a, wasn't the person I would have guessed. I actually did find a horse with a horn on uh, YouTube as well. <laughs> I'll show that to you later. All right, coming up here on the show, our next guest says all military options should be on the table when it comes to North Korea. Lieutenant Colonel Michael Waltz is on deck next. If anything happens to Guam, there's going to be big, big trouble in North Korea. This man will not get away with what he's doing, believe me. And if he utters one threat, he will truly regret it. President Trump calling out dictator Kim Jong-un, saying the U.S. will not be threatened. But is it time to take action and potentially preemptive action? What would that look like? Joining me now to react is the author of Warrior Diplomat, a Green Beret's battles from Washington to Afghanistan, former Green Beret commander and Fox News contributor, Lieutenant Colonel Michael Waltz. Uh, thank you very much, Lieutenant Colonel, for joining us this morning. I mean, this is this is basically warrior diplomacy right now, trying to use the lever, levers of hard power right. to bring them to the table. Is, is the credible threat of a preemptive strike really important in that? And what would that look like? Well, it has to be on the table, and all military options have to be on the table. That's what makes diplomacy effective, and that's what the last administration just couldn't figure out. You know, it's kind of like a football coach that that uh, took the pass off the table and just told.